In this video, we'll show you how to install different size risers on your arrow extensions and how to install the included angle blocks if needed to fine tune your desired fit. The riser kit includes lengths ranging from 30 millimeters to 125 millimeters. Reference these timestamps to skip ahead if needed. The first step is to remove the standard 50 millimeter riser that comes on your arrow extensions. Loosen the riser bolts in the riser. Disconnect the wire from the port junction box that is located in the riser. And screw the bolts to remove the hose clip. Then, remove the riser bolts on the top of the extensions and set aside. The riser should now be completely disconnected from the arrow extensions. To create more slack in the wires, first remove the elbow pads. Pull on the wire to get slack, and then pull it out from the bottom of the extension base. At this point, you can adjust forearm pads to be positioned in a broad range of width, foreaft, and even horizontally angled positions. Remove rubber grommets. Notice the grid patterns and adjust to your preferred riding position. Use four screws on each extension and torque to five newton meters. Lift wire and replace rubber grommet snug into the extensions with wires neatly placed into the grooves. Replace the Velcro elbow pads. For SRAM builds, slide the zip extensions under the bridge to your desired length and torque down to 5 newton meters. To install a taller riser, slide the wires through until the riser is flush with the bottom of the extension base. Screw the upper riser bolts back into the top of the extensions. Torque to 12 newton meters incrementally. To attach the arrow extensions onto the base bar, use your DI2 tool to connect the wire coming out of the base bar to the port junction box in the riser. When you hear a click, place the riser in the groove on the base bar, being careful not to pinch the wires. Once the riser is in place, screw the riser bolts back into the bottom of the base bar. Torque to 12 newton meters incrementally. Locate the angle blocks in the hardware and tools box. The blocks include 2.5 degrees, 5 degrees, and 10 degrees. You may stack any two combinations of blocks together, but not all three. No 5mm riser should be installed when using angle blocks. To install one or two of the angle blocks, first remove the riser bolts located on the top of the extension bar. Lift the arrow extensions until there is enough slack in the wires to locate the junction box. Unplug the wires from the junction box and make sure that the wire doesn't slide down into the riser. Next, place your desired angle block onto the riser. Grab your arrow extension and use your DI2 tool to connect the wire back into the junction box. Slide the wires down onto the riser and be careful not to pinch the wires when placing the arrow extensions back on. Each angle will have a specific combination of bolt lengths to install on the top of the bar. Refer to this chart for bolt length specifications. Torque to 12 newton meters incrementally. If needed, pull the slack out of the wire into the arrow extensions. To install the 30 to 40 millimeter risers, you will need to connect the wires to the port junction box within the base bar. First, remove the riser and arrow extensions from the base bar as previously shown. Unscrew the bolt on the base bar and remove the cover of the base bar to access the wires. Pull the wire through the hole from the base bar. Remove the junction box from the riser and attach it to the wire that is in the base bar using the DI2 tool. Pull extension wires through the riser and place it snug into the arrow extension base. 
screw the riser bolts into the top of the extensions to attach the riser. Slip extension wires through the hole in the center of the base bar until they come out of the opening on the side. Using the DI2 tool, connect wires to the junction box and neatly tuck them into the base bar. Screw the upper riser bolts back into the top of the extensions. Torque to 12 newton meters incrementally. Place the base bar cover back in place and tighten the screw until the cover is flush with the base bar. Check that the front binder set screw located on the head tube under the base bar is torqued to 10 newton meters. Then tighten the rear steerer clamp bolts by incrementally torquing each left and right bolt one after another and repeat until both bolts are torqued to 4 newton meters.